Hey guys, Sean B here and today we are testing out the new Win Kung Fu Girl and also the buff Dark Vampire Lord. So, they buffed Ling Ling in the Street Fighter patch, allowing her to block buff with skill 2 and skill 3. Also, skill 1 can potentially go into skill 2 to block buff. So Ling Ling is now the only unit in the game that can block buff with 3 skill. That is amazing. And also, she can strip enemy buff with skill number 2. So she is right now, in my opinion, the best buff blocker for this dungeon. Because she bring all you need. She can even defense break, but not that it matter too much. Her AoE can also slow the enemy team, which means the side tower will be slowed down so that they will not do damage or buff the boss attack bar. So, once again, Ling Ling is the best buff blocker for this dungeon. She can be fused in the fusion circle. She's a net 4. Please, make her. Before we go in, I would like to ask you a quick favor. We are trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you can do me a favor, you find the video helpful, hit the subscribe button. We are so close to it. And you subscribing might push us over to 100,000 subscribers. Really appreciate you for that, okay? They also buff Ergar. When he buffed Blood Contract, he can gain instant turn into Weaken. But he likes to spam skill 1. So Edgar is here for like, you know, safety purpose and the attack lead and the attack buff. If you want this team to be faster, you may want to put in a Lucian to clear trash wave. But that is more for record run because Lucian doesn't really do anything in the boss stage anyway. And if you want your team to be consistent, I still recommend Lauren to keep the boss down and also to kill the mid boss much quicker. So right here, I have Ling Ling moving first in the team because if she block buff in turn number 1, you don't have to deal with any shield or defense buff potentially appearing on the boss, which will greatly reduce your damage output. And I have my Vampire to move right after Lauren to buff attack power. As you can see right there, turn 1 block buff, she can go with skill number 3 to block as well. If there's buff on the boss she can strip with her skill 2 and that's really awesome. The vampire can now proc right back into a skill 2 to block as well. So this team I think is probably gonna be the most free to play. No, no, no. I don't think the vampire lord should be the most free to play because you have to buy him via the coin shop and he's not exactly cheap. So if you want to have the most free to play team, I recommend you to run Fran in the slot of the Vampire Lord. But I'm not using Fran right now because my Fran is for gear battle purpose. She's really fast, which means she'll move in front of Ling Ling and she will cause the boss to have the buff on, you know, the defense buff and the shield buff. But Fran will be much safer than Ling Ling. They change something about the boss. The boss will no longer stun you for two turn. But right now, even without buff, the boss can stun you for one turn with a 25% chance. Which means if you have immunity on your team, you'll be okay. So if you use your Fran, it's gonna be much, much safer. But if you want a faster run and your rune quality allow for you to take some risk, I think running an air guard will be so, so much better because more damage is always better. As you can see right here, even if Ling Ling use skill 1, there is a very decent chance she's gonna proc into skill 2, allowing her to block buff and strip the boss buff at the same time. So once again, this is right now the best buff blocker for Steel Fortress, and I think everyone should have one. Hey, it's really amazing. I don't think you should build the Dark Witch or the Zinc anymore if you can build this unit, okay? Because I don't find any reason to use them in my team anymore. The boss doesn't turn stun for two turns, which means if you have a Fran right here, it's gonna be super safe. And you, it will allow Ling Ling to maybe 
maybe miss one turn you know resistance happen is pretty okay it's very common for resistance to happen if you're running zinc or gina maybe you want to take out let's say raok or crow for a zinc or a gina because you don't want to ever fail this dungeon for example because there'll be a time where ling ling will miss the debuff back to back but once again, it's really hard because skill 2 and skill 3 both are multi-hit skill and they don't have a low activation rate. They are 100% activation rate. As you can see right there, she's stripped and blocked in the same skill. Which means it is very hard for Ling Ling to actually miss the block buff. It's very hard for her to miss. So it's crazy how counters just give you the best unit for this dungeon. And that unit is free to play. I mean, not exactly free to play, you have to max skill, you have to fuse a unit, but honestly, she is way too good, okay? With Airguard, the run is below 1 minute, with Front, the run will be above 1 minute. But let's say you don't have Ling Ling right now, and you actually have this stupid thing. Okay, let's talk about him for a second. I used to build him for fun, for YouTube content, and I don't exactly like him, he do very shitty damage. But they actually buffed this guy for no goddamn reason. They now allow him to block buff, okay? He can grant the debuff when he's attacked, which is really cool. So the boss touch him with the lightning thing or the boss attack the entire team. You will leave the block buff on the boss. His skill too can block buff as well, but the activation chance is only 75%. So it's not consistent at all, okay? This one is consistent. It's just gonna happen when the boss touch you. He has defense break and dots in skill one, but very low chance to proc the debuff as well. So overall, he's like more of a safety net for you and not really something you should rely on. One thing about Ikmanodon is that he likes to use skill one a little bit too often than he should be. So when he doesn't use his skill two, see that? Right off the bat, he's already using skill 1. So it's a little bit annoying that this guy doesn't use his skill 2 often. Even though it's kind of funny that they buff this guy and I have him 6 star because I make a YouTube video about him, I don't know, years ago. He's right now a viable option for buff blocking. You see right there, that 2 turn buff block. But it's only 75% chance to happen. So you don't want to use something that's like 75% chance in a, in a dungeon that is already pretty RNG dependent. So I'm not too sure about using this guy. Okay, so we don't have the thing. Oh, he actually used it and it land. Ikmaron just proved me wrong. <laughs> he literally just proved me wrong. But in all honesty, it is not consistent. Okay. But let's say you don't have the dark unit, you don't have Zinc, you don't have Gina, you don't have Ling Ling just yet. He might be an okay option. There are multiple reasons why he can be like a temporary unit to use. He's a fire unit, he's a defense type unit, so he won't die easily. And nobody in this dungeon will target him because it's a fire unit. So you can use him as a 5 star unit while you build up your Ling Ling as a buff blocker. So I think it's not bad and he's a fire unit. Building him is super easy. Just go speed, defense, defense. You go with 24 accuracy and he's just only here for the buff block. Potentially maybe land the defense break and the dots. But he's mostly here for the buff block. And you don't need skill up for him as well because skill up don't really improve anything besides giving him I think 2 turn cooldown and the skill number 2. But let's say you run a Fran instead of Agar. Your team is not the kind that run really fast. You might take some damage from the boss. I think this guy is perfect because when he get hit by the boss, he give the block buff. As you can see right here, he did that already. But now I really need the Lauren to start stripping this thing. Okay, so you strip the thing and now you can start doing damage. So. He's an okay option. I wouldn't say he's the best. I just think he's a funny option. He's ugly as fuck. I hate this family. I don't like them at all because of how they look. But I guess, you know, lizard life matter. And I should respect the lizard and the family. And recommend him as an option. Because honestly, he's an okay option. 
Definitely not the best though, all right? Definitely not the best. I still prefer Ling Ling 100% of the time. Ooh, with this team, I now feel very interested in farming this dungeon because it's super stable and I, I love it. I love this team so much. Very clean run and there's not a lot of chance for the team to fail at all. I get to use my Agar and the Ling Ling, which I don't really use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I really need artifact from this dungeon. So they nerfing the boss, giving us more option. It's just mind blowing. And really appreciate come to us for doing this. They, can I say, listen to the community by giving us more option in this dungeon. And now I can actually farm it. Also, they reduce the selling cost for artifacts. Oh wait, no. They reduce the upgrading cost for artifacts and improve the selling price for artifacts. So overall, artifacts are looking better in terms of mana economy and being able to farm this dungeon is a huge step forward for me personally. And I hope that you can craft this team as well. Don't have to use Aegar, you can use Fran, you can use whatever attack buff you want to use, but his attack leader skill is just too amazing. And I really hope you start farming this dungeon. For the past one month, everybody coming to me asking about this dungeon, I can give you a team, I can recommend you to use Zinc and Gina, but ultimately, I hated this dungeon altogether, and I kept telling people that, don't, don't farm this dungeon for now, farm the other one, they're gonna nerf, they're gonna buff unit for this dungeon, I can assure you, and they did. And now, I can confidently say that, you can use this team to farm this dungeon and you should be farming this dungeon for the artifact that you can use for an other unit. So, hey, they did it. And now let's go all in and farm Steel Fortress for the next, I don't know, week or two to strengthen the attribute artifact roster that you have for your RTA, your guild battle unit. And hey, thank you come to us. Really appreciate it. And so thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you do, smash like, subscribe to the channel if you're new and i'll see you guys in more update street fighter video bye